Well, it is hard to believe, folks, but next month marks 10 years since Malaysia Airlines flight MH370 disappeared. That's a decade without an answer to that key question, where is the plane? Well, Australian authorities had their chance to find it, but ultimately failed. And joining me live now is a man who was on that search, at least in the initial stages, the former Australian naval officer and underwater surveyor, Peter Waring. Peter, it is good to see you. Good evening, your time in the UK. Let's start off with this anniversary, 10 years. What, what does this anniversary mean to you? Uh, well, it, it means uh, just a, another reminder of the failure. As you said um, just a moment ago, it's been 10 years. It's extraordinary to think about all the things that have occurred in the world uh, during that period and the fact that we're now no closer really to finding the aircraft than we were when, when we were spending millions and millions of dollars, uh, you know, 10, 9, 8 years ago. Yeah. Yeah, more than 100 million, I think it was in the end. Given that, as we said, failed in that search, Pete, how much should the onus be on us to have another crack? Well, that's a difficult question. I think the fact that we invested so much time and energy, and, and by we, I mean the Australian government, I think there's some responsibility there. There are also Australian families that uh, tragically lost loved ones in this disaster. And I think in some sense, given that we, we invested so much time, we invested so much energy, and, and there's a lot of expertise within the Australian government about precisely what happened. And and I think the Australian government is perhaps better placed than, than some other regional mm -hmm. governments, Malaysia. Uh, the Malaysian government probably chief among them and and perhaps it's something that we should as, as a country take up again. There would be a few reasons for this but what do you think is the key reason why we failed in that mission Pete? Well it was an extraordinary extraordinarily difficult thing to do and, and and we had such little information about where the aircraft was and I think it, at various points we made it seem as though we had a very good sense of where it was but that just wasn't the case we had absolutely more or less next to nothing yeah. and um, and I think that made it incredibly difficult and I think however over time uh, the, the the operation was was wrapped in a bit of a, a, a armature of bureaucracy if you will and and that made it more and more difficult to change course mm. we'd committed to one particular search area and even though it started to look as though perhaps the aircraft was elsewhere and there was an increasing stream of evidence to suggest that it was elsewhere we weren't really able to change where we were looking and, and in some ways we'd sort of shackled ourselves to this one particular area and weren't flexible enough to look elsewhere when um, when there was evidence to suggest that perhaps it was elsewhere yeah and, and and you and i we talk about this in the documentary that airs tonight i mean what what, what, what when did you start to feel like hey we're in the wrong place here this, this doesn't seem right well, it was about six months into the underwater search, which which would have been around April or May of 2015, uh, which which is itself just an extraordinarily long period of time ago. Um, and and what we'd we'd covered enough of the sea floor to to at that point, I thought at least discount the, the leading assumption that that the that the aircraft had crashed close to the seventh arc, and which is the seventh of those handshakes that the aircraft made with the satellite. Um, yeah, I think if 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 that assumption had been correct, then we would have found the aircraft by that point. Mm. So at that stage, I was starting to ask some pretty serious questions about where the aircraft was and whether we were looking in the right place. And, and as we know, you know, you were all part of that. Just describe uh, for the viewers this morning the challenges and the difficulties you faced way out there in uh, such an isolated part of the Southern Indian Ocean. Yeah, well, I was very fortunate that I was based in Canberra because it is a really, <laughs> really rough part of the the ocean and, and absolutely as a, as a mariner i can tell you that it's not a place that you you want to be spending much time uh the wind conditions the sea conditions out there were absolutely atrocious and we were losing days weeks months of time on station due to due to weather conditions and and I, you know I'm, I'm when i look back the thing that i'm most grateful for is the fact that we we didn't seriously injure any of the crews out there it was an absolutely extraordinary by them. It was an extraordinary effort by the people in Canberra to try and get this operation off the ground. I think too often we, we focus on the failure, but there was um, there was a whole range of people from many different backgrounds and many different parts of the government who were working together to try and make this happen. They're all trying their best, and I think everyone was well-intentioned. Um, it was an extraordinarily difficult thing to pull off, um, both in the office and, and at sea. And, you know, the fact that we were able to cover 200 and some thousand square kilometers i think is a testament to that effort but but um we could have done it better 
there's no doubt about that. And I think you're quite right to call it a failure. And I think we all have to just accept that it was. And there's a lot of mm. taxpayer money spent on it. So, so we should be willing mm. to acknowledge the fact. Uh, until another search is launched, and uh, hopefully that one is more successful. Peter Waring, uh, good to have you with us this morning. Good evening again, your time. And uh, we'll talk to you again, Pete. And Pete is part of the exclusive Sky News documentary, MH370, 10 years on. That documentary airs tonight right here on Sky, 7.30pm Eastern Daylight Time.